Uh, let me take another call. Uh, Harper in Canada. Can you hear Harper? Hi, yeah, can go you ahead. Me? Okay, great. Yeah, go hey, ahead. Great, thanks, Greg. And Savali, I read your um, your expose when it came out in Suite101.com a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I always wondered what happened to you because you vanished from Suite101. So it's great to hear about you. A couple quick questions. I'll make them real fast. First is the term Moriah conquering wind. I never heard that before or since I read it in your expose. I wondered if you could elaborate on that term a little bit. I also wanted to ask you if these, this cult, um, as far as you know, claims to or believes to derive any of its heritage from Atlantis or any other um, lost civilization. Okay. okay. I'm not sure about the reference to Mariah you're describing, because Mariah is, is I mean, but I can I certainly address the second question. Um, the Illuminati completely believe that Atlantis is real. They teach it to their children as part of the oral history. They believe it was the, one of the greatest civilizations that ever existed and one of the most advanced. And what they teach, their their take on it is that Atlantis was a great, race of highly intelligent um, people who uh, who had a highly advanced state but, and who were highly enlightened. And what, what they but what they teach the Illuminati children is that then this prophet of the enemy, who is the prophet of God, came and, and foretold their destruction if they didn't change their ways. Because they were definitely occultists. They were Luciferian on Atlantis. I mean that was the the religion and in fact, a lot of the advances that Atlantis enjoyed was was passed down to them through supernatural means. Is, is what I'll say. And so, so they lasted the prophet, and they they in fact they they, they killed him. And he, I guess sometime afterwards, we were taught that a few inhabitants escaped, but that the that, but tragically the great city was lost. And, and the Illuminati to this day mourn the loss of Atlantis because they feel that that these were that the few survivors that left were were among the the, the great um, people who helped found the what you call the precursors of, of Illuminism. One more quick question, if I may, and I wanted to ask you if you have any reason to believe that the people, men and or women, at the top of the pyramid, so to speak practice a kind of magic where they're kind of skipping through time, in other words. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, well, well, you know, no, leaving it's, one it's body, a leaving oh, the, yeah. the solar yeah. spirit, leaving one body and coming and being born into another one, and they're, therefore, oh, yeah. you know, living through oh, yeah. time. All the time. In fact, see, now this, now I didn't go there in this interview because you start telling wacko if you start discussing things like that. But the, in the spiritual side, they very much teach things like time travel, traveling out of body, um, you know, uh, psychic battling, um, things like that, things that cannot be explained by logic. And I saw things that I cannot explain through human intellect or reasoning that were highly supernatural and involve all of that and more. Okay, great. It's a pleasure to speak with you, man. God bless okay, you. Okay, thanks, Harper. Oh, uh, I think we have Dave Wilcox called in. I think you know uh, Dave through emails. Uh, yes. Uh, Zvali. Dave, uh, you want to say hello and you have a question for Zvali? Sure. Uh, Spali, it's great to have you on the air. I'm really glad you decided to do it, so thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Dave. It's good to talk with you. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you're an old friend. I've been reading your stuff for so long, and um, you share so willingly and openly about yourself. It's a real honor to be able to speak with you in person like this. Well, Go ahead, well, you. Dave. You may have something you want to say to Zavali. Go ahead. Sure. Um, Question? I think one of the things I'd really like to have covered here is you shared with me in an email recently about the stages of enlightenment that they try to guide people through. Yes. And I would like you to try to sketch out for people how the behavioral conditioning that's coming through the media and the movies and so forth might have affected them. In other words, what personality characteristics would you see in a person when they have been influenced by these teachings? How would the average person who's not really a bad person start to be leaning if the Illuminati teachings were actually having an effect on them? What would they be like? What would start happening? Well, again, as I said, the average person is not going to be a member of the group, so the influence right. would be much less. But the media, I believe that, well, in fact, I know, I don't believe, I know that some of the media that we're seeing nowadays is specifically targeted towards teaching people their philosophy or goals. All you have to do is watch a children's cartoons on Saturday morning, and almost 
across the board, you'll see morphing, power battles, occult, and that's intentional. Um, movies coming out. But basically, if a person's being influenced by their teachings, that person will learn to not trust their own instincts, their own feelings, their own body, their own perceptions. They'll be looking outside for guidance. Second of all, they will be moving towards a heavily um, occultic worldview. That, 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 you know, that um, leaning upon the occult is very heavily encouraged. All you have to do is watch Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, know? I mean, the, the I, whole I mean, idea sorry, of the... I mean, not to slam one of the most popular movies, but yes, I mean, or The Matrix. If you want to know pure and luminous philosophy, The Matrix shows it. Oh, yeah. Definitely, the entire... Right down with uh, Morpheus being broken down with the injections, and they said that it's like hacking computer. Yeah. Okay, uh, exactly. we're going to take a break. We'll come back with our final segment, a uh, big finish on the investigative journal with uh, Zvali on the Public Broadcasting Network. Okay, uh, we're back with our final segment with Bali, and uh, she's telling us uh, about her experiences 30 years uh, with this insidious group, the Illuminati, and how deeply penetrated and infiltrated they are in our culture and our, in our country. Bali, we talked about the higher levels, uh, the middle levels you were involved in uh, as a head trainer. Uh, how low do they go? I mean, I've said all along they, they're involved in gang stalking, the MK Ultra program, uh, infiltrating truth organizations, uh, infiltrating uh, groups that are trying to do good. Uh, how far down do they go? Well, they go down to the sister group level that I mentioned. And most sister groups have anywhere from usually roughly around uh, 30 members. And those are what a lot of people would consider the what you think of as satanic cults with the high priest and priestess, that would be the lower, le the local level, the lower level. But those people are also very active in their community. And so they will be involved in infiltrating activities when possible. Because to them, it's not infiltrating, it's helping, they think they're helping the group or helping people by becoming a member and, and spreading the influence. Let me uh, squeeze in one more caller, Roger, a faithful listener. Roger, uh, you're on the investigative journal. Uh, yeah, thanks. I had so big a question and so little time, but uh, maybe I just will squeeze it. Had a couple of minutes. Yeah. Really try to work it in, Roger. Yeah, uh, well, you'll enjoy this first, and that is I recall when Charlotte Iserbeet was here on the local Clear Channel radio show, and the host was, of course, dismissive of an Illuminati agenda. It was great to hear Charlotte say, you're telling me my... My own father was a high, and she, of course, was the first or second fiddle secretary at the Department of Ed. And she said, my, you're telling me my own father on his deathbed was telling me, you go get him, girl. And he was <laughs> one of them. And so that was great. Anyway, uh, I was going, my question was towards the uh, philosophical religious uh, motivators, if you will, which you've been dwelling on. And I've been, I've been trying to form it up into a more cohesive uh, yeah, try to make it quick. We're running out of time. Go ahead. Yeah, to expose the ethos of the, uh, you know, it's like the neocons serve as the pseudo-intellectual rationale for the Illuminati agenda. And uh, I, I don't presume that it turns on such fine uh, distinctions uh, so much as it is a bare-knuckled lust for power. But everybody has sort of a worldview that uh, they use to justify their actions. And, uh, of course, uh, it's a most unconservative humanistic uh, social engineering agenda on a far larger scale. And now you mentioned about these people are basically, and it's rare as hand teeth. Quick, Roger. Yeah, to find somebody that's not uh, uh, oxymoronically both uh, uh, a spiritualist and a cultist and also a, a, a what do you call a, a hard a core a rationalist, or maybe that's just for public consumption, right? I know there was a question there somewhere, Roger, but anyway, uh, thanks for calling. Let me, I only got a minute. I got to finish with Zvali. Uh, Zvali, uh, tell us in your own words, you got a, about a minute or two left here. Uh, the real, you went forward, you, you came forward, you're now living a life uh, completely away from them. What's your hopes of uh, the future in our country right now? I, my hope is that people realize that this is happening and that they will start doing something about it, that they will start looking at 
Now, again, we're talking about people who are immensely wealthy, so it won't be easy. But if people could rise up in prayer and just say, this isn't okay, if people will become informed enough to want to learn more about it, be aware that it exists, and then possibly pray. Pray that people will, will take action against the things that are happening. Because okay, Swally, so okay. we're, okay. we're all out of time. I, I, we're going to end on that.